The following is a presentation of TFNN, live at TFNN, The Money Masters. Now, The Money Masters. Welcome, folks, to the Money Masters Show. I'm your host, Steve Rhodes. Thanks so much for joining me as we uh, begin the uh, session here. The Dow is off 17 points right now. S&P is down five. Composite off uh, 15, being led by Apple. We'll take a look at Apple. Small caps off about two points right now. Microsoft up three pennies. Intel down 13 cents. Google off six bucks and change. Cisco up 32 cents. And Apple trading down 17 bucks right now. Out in the 503 level, attacking that 505. 75 as well as the 496 89 level. Our call in number is 877 927 6648. Things are popping in the market here. You got Priceline is the leader in the clubhouse up $6.54 right now. That's up a little bit over 1%. Uh, Amazon up over 1% as well, making an A to B equals CD up. It's up three bucks right now, trading out at 271. Uh, VF Corp up two and a half bucks of rent. Systems, VRNT up two and a half bucks. Coach, COH up uh, two and uh, two dollars and thirty cents. Herbalife, HLF, a big battle going on out there, up about five uh, percent this morning. Nice Systems up six percent. Uh, Colvance, CBD up two bucks and change. To the downside, you've got Apple leading the charge off 17 bucks, Google off six, MasterCard. We're going to take a look at uh, MasterCard struggling this morning, down four bucks and change. TNT Express, off about 42 uh, percent. That is because of who is it? FedEx or UPS deciding that they are not going to go ahead and uh, purchase them. You've got uh, IBM trading down a couple bucks. Chart Industries, GTLS off about three percent this morning. Those are the things. Uh, Qihu, Qihu, Q I H U, Qihu. Uh, down about a buck seventy seven right now. Let's start by taking a look at the uh, indexes, see where we're at here. So we've got the New York Stock Exchange on the uh, chart uh, on the screen here first. If you are just listening on the radio or maybe your mobile device, you can always catch an archive of this show on Channel 10, or you can catch live streaming show here just by going to the homepage of TFNN.com. And on your right-hand side, you'll see the smartphone uh, app button and click on that. You'll be able to catch this show here streaming live. We're going to start with the New York Stock Exchange because uh, that has been the uh, strength uh, strength index in the uh, market. So we already know the weak link out here, which is Apple. So that's giving us uh, some clues. And we'll see how Apple closes today. How it closes today will be a, a real important uh, message with regard to the markets and the uh, direction. So we're going to look both from weakness as well as from strength. Strength is going to be the New York Stock Exchange, which has done a 1.272 uh, expansion of swing points that's coming off of the uh, swing point from the September 14th high. That's at the 85.15 level all the way down to the uh, swing point low on November 16th. Now I'm going to get rid of the expansion. Also on the weekly chart, we had a three drive to a uh, top pattern out there. That's an important topping uh, pattern. So when you have a three drive, you expect to start to see the market pull back post haste. In this case here on the New York Stock Exchange, what you're waiting for is a bearish sign, a bearish candle. You haven't seen that here in quite some time, uh, quite uh, frankly, in the New York Stock Exchange. So today could be it. One of the things you'd be looking for today, now it's, has, it's easy for it to create a uh, bearish engulfing candle because of the small little body uh, that it had on uh, Friday session. Friday session, it opens at 87.14, closes at 87.12, out there. Really bearish case out here for me would be seeing this thing close below, I would say below Thursday's open, which would be 86.56.16. That's the number to be paying attention to on the New York Stock Exchange as you come into the 4 p.m. close out there. Without that, uh, kind of makes you say, hmm. In fact, quite frankly, what the New York Stock Exchange needs to do, it needs to back, get back down below the uh, gap up from January 2nd. That level actually there is the 85.7108. So if you're a bull, you don't have to be worrying too much until you start getting back below the uh, January 2nd level. Of course, that's on the wider breadth of the uh, of the indices out there, and you can see that the New York Stock Exchange up towards that overbought uh, uh, condition, which has to be worked off. So you start to get really bearish when uh, the New York Stock Exchange closes below 
8571.08. Let's go take a look at the number two uh, strength index out there. Actually, there's probably three of them. The transports are also very strong. But let's go take a look at the Russell 2000. See what the Russell 2000 is uh, doing out here right now. Trade out at 788, 78, 69. Uh, the Russell 2000, you know, if it can get back inside that, that January 2nd level, it's tested that level a couple of times. I'd say that in order to get really bearish on the uh, Russell out here, you'd probably want to see it close below the January 3rd candle. That is 870.76. Trade out at 878.68 right now. Let's go take a look at the... Uh, at the transports, because they, too, have been uh, strong out here. So as we take a look at the uh, trannies, where is it here on the uh, screen? Okay, let's go take a look at it. Trading uh, actually up a little bit here, looks like this morning. We widen this trading out at 55.84. So the transport's not showing any weakness. In fact, of all the indices, it is the only one that is up, up two-tenths of a uh, percent. The uh, trannies here trading into this little trend line off of the uh, October 5th area, but also really trading back all the way up to the highs going back to July of 2011. In fact, let's go put this on a, a longer term chart out here. Let's put this on a, a weekly chart. So the highs uh, from May of 2008, May 16, 2008, that high out there is 55.36 since it's 58.84. 55.84 right now. So it has taken out uh, those highs. Right now it is trying to tackle the highs out here. This little doji candle, this little reversal. This is the weekly chart we're looking at now. And the weekly chart is the week of July 8th, 2011. That high is 50, 50, 56.27. It's at 55.83 uh, right now. Coming in there with a certainly wide-ranging bar the week of January 4th. And so the transport's not giving it up here, at least not just yet. Uh, let's go take a look at the NDX. So let's start taking a look at some of the weakness out here. Then we'll gravitate over to Apple and take a look at it. The NDX 100, the NDX 100 here has some really strong support. And that is at the uh, low of the January 2nd candle. That level 27.16.30. That's the number you want to write down on a pad of paper. You get a close below 27.16.30. Well, that will probably tell you that Apple has uh, given up the ghost. Uh, and is uh, closing below 496.89. That will do what that will do is that that level right there, that uh, candle from January 2nd, it's been tested, was tested on the 4th of January, the 7th, as well as the 8th of January. That is held. So that is your strong support area. You want to understand where the uh, strong hands start giving things up. And on the NDX 100, it is going to be at that price point, a close below 27.16.30, trade at 27.29 right now. Let's go switch over to Apple, see what Apple is uh, doing, trade out at 504. So, so far holding the, uh, let's go back over here down to that was the five minute chart that we're looking at. Let's go take a look at the uh, daily chart. Uh, so far trying to get back inside that, uh, both the bullish and golfing and hammer candle. That hammer candle is the November 16th low. That's at 50, uh, what is it here? 505.75 and the bullish and golfing candle. Being the December 17th low, that is the 501.23 out there. So we'll be paying attention closely. Let's go take a look at the uh, Apple as far as volume. It's got volume today, that is for sure. Uh, so far, 10 million shares, only 45 minutes of trading. That 10 million shares really going against the uh, 27 million shares from December 17th, and then the 45 million shares from the 16th. And then, of course, what it's really also going against is that February 15th, 2012 candle. That is really your last line in the sand as far as support is concerned. And that has 53 million shares out there. Let me just write that down here, 53 million shares. So I know what it is that we're looking at throughout the day here. Uh, so that's on Apple. Let's go take a look at the ETFs. On the ETFs, we'll go ahead and start off with the Qs, give you the number on the Qs, just as we did on the NDX 100. The Qs here also replicating that. You can see here on the Qs, Qs struggling as price was trying to move up as the uh, general market, the S&P, the Dow, the Dow slightly uh, moving up here, certainly the Russell 2000 and the uh, and the uh, New York Stock Exchange, but the uh, Qs uh, really struggling at the downdraft candle from October 19th, the high there, 67.27. On Friday session, got above it by a penny, closed below it by a penny, but doing it on much less volume out there. That has 75 million shares, so can't bust them up 
What's it going to do? Now it's going to go try and bust it down. On the queues, you're going to get a release of information at the uh, swing point or at the January 2nd gap up that low, 66.48. That is your number. The queues right now trading at 66.78. Uh, Volume there, 70 million shares as the queues have been moving down here this morning. 12 million shares in 16 in 45 minutes of trading. So that is going to be certainly enough volume if that pace were to keep up. So let's go switch down to the 10 minute chart here. Let's go take a look at the pace of buying and selling inside the queues here. And you can see most of that volume uh, well, first coming in at the open with uh, three and a half million shares, but they had a little down thrust just as we were getting ready to come out of the air at 10 o'clock this morning, uh, moving down with three and a half million shares out here. So you got volume to the downside. This is the 10 minute chart. You can see here is the overbought, oversold uh, condition out here. And you know, you do want to pay attention. I suggest that you pay attention to this and you add this to your charting uh, platform because when you want to buy something, go ahead and buy. When the uh, relative strength is down at the relative weakness level, that's at that 30%-ish range out there. When you want to sell, go ahead and sell when it's up near the highs in that 70-ish uh, percent range out there. Works all the time. Uh, so that is on the uh, Qs. Last time the uh, Qs uh, popped and dropped was on October the 10th uh, out there. You can see here popped up into the over bought condition and then just simply sold off. You had some prop desk here. This is a 10 minute chart. They clearly had orders to sell and uh, move on out of Apple. Whenever I see that kind of linear move to the uh, downside, this was in the queues here, but if we went back to the Apple chart, we would see that as well. Uh, now, if the if we take a look at any volume bars here on the uh, queues, you're gonna see the volume bar to be paying attention to that it's really attacking. It's gonna be that gap up from January 2nd. You can see the volume up there, pretty substantial. Uh, 16 million shares, nothing uh, like it on the uh, downside here. Intraday, though, what you're going to be paying attention to, uh, if it can break the uh, first swing point. The first swing point is going to be the 11.20 uh, a.m. time frame uh, in Apple on January 10th. That low is $66.55 and 1.4 million shares. Now, it's trading inside that swing point right now, and it came in there with three and a half million shares. So what does that say? When you come into a swing point with volume, what's that say? It says you're gonna go test the uh, bottom of it, in this case here. So the uh, Qs, the test that you'll be looking for is the 11.20 a.m. time frame, that level 66.55. Uh, that has, as I say, 1.5 million shares, but you're coming into it hot right now. Let's go take a look at the other uh, ETFs out here, and then we'll switch over to some of the uh, sectors with inside the S&P 500, such as the financials and the energy and the technology sector. But let's go take a look at the uh, spies, see what the spies are doing. The spies here camped out over the weekend inside that September 14th swing point, that level was uh, that swing point goes from 146.76 up to 148.11, rejecting that area right now, trading down at 146.56. Uh, Volume-wise so far to the uh, downside, 25 million shares. The spies here really need to attack the low of January 2nd, that little gap up. So the spies have got some work cut out for them before they really start to uh, break down out there. 877-927-6648. Dow's off 22. S&P off 5. Composite down 16. We'll be right back. What type of investor are you? Conservative, moderate, or aggressive? No matter your investor personality, your overall portfolio should reflect your financial goals, time horizon, and your risk tolerance. Help ensure your portfolio is appropriately invested with an asset allocation plan from Morgan Stanley Wealth Management. Simply picking the right stocks is not enough. Research has shown that choosing the right proportions of stocks, bonds, and cash is essential to the success of your long-term investments. Morgan Stanley believes a carefully selected portfolio can lower volatility and increase investment return potential. Find out about what an asset allocation and a Morgan Stanley Wealth Management financial advisor can do for you. Call Angela O'Brien, first vice president and financial planner of the Clearwater, Florida branch at 727-441-6108 today to discuss your personal financial needs. Asset allocation does not assure a profit or protect against loss in declining financial markets. Investments and services are offered through Morgan Stanley Wealth Management, LLC. Member SIPC. 
with the launch of Tiger TV. TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rose, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, David White, Larry Pesavento, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN is proud to partner with Great Panther Silver for another exciting silver coin giveaway. The Great Panther Silver Super Silver Giveaway begins the week of January 28th and will be choosing 47 lucky winners. It's free to enter with absolutely no strings attached. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com today to fill out your entry form. Every hour that we're on the air, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. the week of January 28th, we'll be randomly choosing one lucky winner that will win a silver coin or bar from Great Panther Silver and TFNN. And the final hour of the week, Friday, February 1st, we'll choose three lucky winners. That's 47 winners in just one week with over $1,000 in silver given away to our loyal listeners. Register today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. And for more information on Great Panther Silver, you can click on their banner on the front page of TFNN.com or check them out on the NYSE Amex, symbol GPL, or on the Toronto Stock Exchange, symbol GPR. This segment is brought to you by Goldfields. For more information, just click the Goldfields banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow off 25 points right now. S&P off about uh, six. And let's go finish up the ETFs uh, for us. Let's take a look at the uh, Dow, the diamonds. The diamonds here struggling at the uh, gap. This window here is now being uh, tested, has been tested here. That is the uh, gap down from October the uh, 19th out there. The top of that gap, 134.80, 10 million shares to the downside. On Friday, Apple, uh, Apple, uh, Diamond, the Diamonds here moved up with only four and a half million shares, got up to a high of 134.80. That 134.80 again going against 134.80. Uh, so now you've got a, a tested area. That's the first time that that level has been tested. So that sets up some uh, resistance out here. Uh, set up uh, somewhat of a bearish uh, candle today. Only 1.2 million shares during the first hour to the uh, downside out here uh, inside the uh, Dow Diamonds. Let's go take a look at the Russell 2000, the IWM. See what the IWM is uh, doing out here. You know, we took a look at the IWM last week with uh, one of our callers, and we were uh, he was pointing out to us uh, that the uh, May 6th uh, swing point, May 6, 2011. 338 million shares to the upside. And as the IWM got up over it on January 4th out there, did it with 259 million shares. Even if you go ahead and convert that uh, for the uh, New Year's Day, uh, you still didn't have enough volume to, uh, but to uh, say that you really had a breakout above the highs with conviction. Last week, you also closed over it 
uh, last week, though, 141 million shares. So look, uh, the uh, number here on the IWM to get back in its range, much like you saw with uh, Walmart. And we can go pull up the Walmart chart here. On, on, the, on the other hand, with Walmart, they did have a breakout of a uh, swing point with conviction on the uh, monthly chart. The number you're looking at for the uh, small caps to get back inside the lower part of its range is going to be a close of 82 41 this i'm sorry 8681 uh, that this is on a weekly chart uh, right now trading out at 8705 so the number is again 8681 that is on the IWM that is the weekly chart that's the one that you want to be paying attention to for sure on the daily chart out here uh, so far the small caps not doing a, a whole lot uh, in fact still trading above the September 14th level which is 8696 out there volume so far in the uh, Russell 2000 uh, 6.7 million shares. Uh, that's after making a high three trading sessions ago with uh, 40 million shares. So you do have some volume starting to expand in this marketplace to the uh, downside. Speaking of the uh, downside, uh, let's go take a look at the uh, financial uh, sector out here because that has been strong hands here as of recent. So let's go take a look at the uh, XLF. As we take a look at the XLF, I'm going to put this on the weekly chart first for you. On the weekly chart, you can see that the XLF has really been in a uh, consolidation range. Uh, that consolidation range, the high is really in the 1712-ish range. Uh, the uh, XLF getting up last week into 1717, closing out at 1711. Uh, there was 230 million shares last week going against last time that it was up there, 187 million shares. So it did have the volume. But, of course, if we go back here, 704 million shares, really what it was going up against, which was April of 2010. Not enough to uh, bust it up. And on the uh, weekly chart, well, this is the weekly chart. Let's go take a look at the uh, daily chart. But the weekly chart here setting up for a potential bearish candle out here. Let's go back to the uh, daily chart on the financials, and it's both from weakness and from strength where we're going to get our uh, signals in the uh, marketplace. You want to see both of those moving in the uh, same direction out there. If we take a look at the uh, daily chart of the uh, XLF, so far trading out at 1697, 13 million shares to the downside. The XLF doesn't start to get real bearish until it comes down and tests that January 2nd gap up area which has 69 million shares that low is 1674 again trading at 1696 here right now you can see the xlf being in that overbought uh, condition so it has to work its way off if we go down and take a look at let's look at a 10 minute chart here on the xlf see if there's any significant uh, volume spikes out here you had one at uh 1010 on Friday out here uh, to the downside. That area has been taken out. That was 7.6 million shares. That was taken out uh, with uh, 7.5 million shares here at 10 o'clock here this morning. Uh, right now, you've got a little bit of a, a gap that the XLF is trying to uh, tackle. Uh, let me now let me refresh the screen. I don't think that was accurate data here. Give me a second here to let's make sure here. I don't think there was a gap there at all. No, there was not a gap. Let me, let me come back here. I had bad data. My apologies for that. Jeez, don't do that. So the gap here that the XLF is uh, going to come down and try to tag is the one left from the 4 p.m. close on January 9th. Gaps up on the uh, morning of January 10th with 8.5 million shares as it has moved down into that level moved in with only 3 million shares. So it's moving down with lighter volume and taking out a swing point with lighter volume as we speak. Dow is off 19. S&P is off 5. We come back. We're going to take a look at MasterCard. MasterCard, one of those equity charts that you want to be paying attention to as well because that has been strong hands out there. 877-927-6648. And MasterCard trading off 5 bucks right now. We'll be right back. Just recently, on December 28th, Market Insight subscribers were advised to go along the QQQ, the NASDAQ 100 ETF, on December 28th at 63.91. And only two trading days later, after a huge jump in the markets, Market Insight subscribers were advised to sell the QQQ at 66.64 for a $2.73 or 4.27% profit to start off 2013. At the same time, Tom O'Brien had advised his clients looking for a more leveraged trade that they could 
should have initiated a position in the QLD, the ProShares Ultra QQQ ETF. And over the same two trading days, Market Insights subscribers were able to lock in a $4.48 profit or an 8.47% gain in just one trade. Get your two-week free trial to Market Insights today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during your free trial and pay nothing. Don't miss out on the next great trading opportunity in 2013. Act today. If you're an investor looking for a great weekly investment newsletter, then now is the perfect time to try out Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Every Tuesday, Ken breaks down multiple sectors in his weekly newsletter, Ultimate Growth Stocks, with a full in-depth report including specific trading recommendations within his model portfolio, charts, sector analysis, upcoming economic data, along with intra-week trading updates on newsletter positions whenever the market dictates. Right now, you can receive a full month, that's 30 days, to evaluate Ken's newsletter free of charge to see if it fits your trading plan. At less than $75 per month, Ken provides you with his expert trading advice that can pay for itself in no time. Take advantage of this great offer by signing up for a 30-day free trial to Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks today. Don't let this offer pass you by. Visit the front page of TFNN.com and sign up now. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. This segment is brought to you by Crocodile Gold. For more information, just click the Crocodile Gold banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, before we went to break, we were taking a look at the uh, financials. Uh, we had uh, moved down into the 10-minute uh, chart on the financials. Uh, we were taking a look at the uh, swing point out here from 10, 10 a.m. on uh, November, the, November, January 11th out there. That was on Friday. That had 15 million shares. As the uh, financials passed that on the 10-minute uh, chart, they did that coming into the 10, 10 a.m. time frame. Only 1.7 million shares. Light on volume completed in A to B equals CD down. The actual number would have been 1695 actually got down to 1696 so i think we can cut a little bit of slack here right now and we're looking at a 10 minute chart trying to form a little bullish engulfing uh, candle here at the uh, bottom has not uh, completely uh, closed the uh, gap out here that was left over from the uh, open uh really from the open on the uh, uh 10th of uh, january the top of the gap is the uh, close on january 10th that level is sixteen dollars and ninety four cents now what you can take a look at here you know and there's a number of you that uh, might trade the faz and the fas out here 
Uh, and so depending on what the time frame is that you might use, whether it's 10 minute, 30 minute charts out here, just go ahead and put that uh, relative strength indicator uh, out there. If you'd like to learn how to use it, I've done a, a couple of sessions on that that are contained in my, in my newsletter service, Mastering Probability. Also, I do uh, workshops. I've got another workshop coming up on uh, Wednesday of this week. And always in those workshops, I try to uh, provide great education. Uh, it's archived on your members page, and you can always go back and take a look at it. So i show you exactly how to set up the uh, relative strength indicator out there. You can see here as it moves down into the uh, lows here, you know it's places where you want to be looking to, if you're looking to go long, it's where or you're trading it today, it's where you want to be taking a look at maybe taking some of your profit off the table if you were short looking for reversal candles because once something gets into, and this is just a normal breathing pattern, you want to stay with inside the time frame it is that you uh, trade on. And actually you can put it down to as low as a minute chart if you wanted to, but that's a little wacky. Uh, you don't want to trade on that type of time frame. But you, what you can see, though, is you can see how it just consistently works. It's a great EKG system. You want to go ahead and combine that, though, with uh, candles as well to identify whether or not there's going to be more likely a bounce to reverse or just simply is it going to just be a, a sideways move as it works off. Either it's overbought or oversold conditions out there. So that's on the XLF. I wanted to go take a look at uh, MasterCard. I think it's important for us to be paying attention to some of the strong hands and weak hands out here. In the case of uh, MasterCard, uh, moving down today, trading out at 523.50, and it's coming against its most recent gap up. That was established on the uh, session of January 9th. The low there, 522.67. Uh, so far today, it has gotten down to 522.96. Hasn't gotten all the way down there. Volume so far, 273,000 shares as it goes against a 1.1 million shares. So it's got pretty decent volume for the first hour of uh, trading out here. Now, here's what you want to be paying attention to. The question is, is it going to test the uh, 522.67 and hold above it and not get down to, this is the end, and not get down to a price of 521.05. The reason why I say that is because there's a little bit of a potential island that could be forming here in uh, MasterCard, and that is important to uh, be paying attention to. Still strong. Uh, did have a, a bearish uh, candle on the uh, trading session of January 10th. Uh, didn't really take back that bearish candle on the 11th out there, and today having some additional follow through. So we're going to want to pay attention to uh, MasterCard. Uh, it doesn't have to create an island reversal, but with a stock up at $523.75, I can tell you that's one of those stocks that you want to be paying attention to, most certainly for the most bearish of uh, signals out there. An island reversal would be it. Now, the problem here is even if it did create that uh, tomorrow, and the parameters would be this again, uh, you would not see it trade today into the 521.05 number, and tomorrow you would see a gap down uh, below whatever today's uh, trading uh, low is. Uh, now, the problem is that this does have some many signs of strength out there, but I will tell you that the island reversal, that is where your back is. That's a great, that's a great reversal candle signal out there in, uh, I won't say in any marketplace, because you've got to make sure that you're paying attention to the underlying instrument out there. Uh, if you're playing foreign currency markets, you've got uh, value, dollar valuations that you're dealing with. Uh, it is really great candle signal inside an individual stock itself out there because MasterCard only trading, in essence, during market hours out here. So pay attention to uh, MasterCard, M-A, again, being the uh, ticker symbol. Let's go take a look at some of the other stocks here that are popping and dropping. Not much right now going on with uh, Apple, trading out to 15 bucks out at the 505 area, so I'm keeping my right eye on Apple, and if anything uh, uh, changes there, we'll go, uh, we'll go immediately to the uh, stock chart. Uh, we've got, uh, let's go take a look at uh, Google, though. Let's go see what Google is uh, doing here, because that is uh, off about uh, 11 bucks right now, and so we know Google was running into a, a resistance area, the downdrafts out there. So let's go see if we've got any kind of reversal signals going on inside uh, Google. So Google not making it all the way up to the uh, session high of October 18th. Uh, that high is 759.42. That is where Google last uh, dropped down uh, with big volume as it has made its way up here. 
Uh, it's made a point seven eight six retracement, almost uh, to the uh, penny. Seven forty four seventy seven. What is the uh, number? Got up to seventy five seven forty five round number high out there. Also. Uh, what Google has done as it was making that high, moving up into overbought uh, territory. So far this morning, down with 820,000 shares. That 820,000 shares, the test on uh, Google really is going to be the January 2nd level. Of course, volume there, only 2.5 million shares. So you get some volume coming out of uh, Google. The test on uh, Google would be the 716.55 level. That is the uh, gap up. That is the low of that January 2nd candle out there. Priceline having a nice morning, up 11 bucks right now. Uh, Amazon up 4 bucks. Amazon taking out an A to B equal CD. Intuitive Surgical up as well. Let's go take a look at some of these others. Let's go, I've not taken a look at the Herbalife stock chart. So let's go see a real battle unfolding out here between the bulls and the bears out here. HLF is the uh, ticker symbol. So let's go ahead and uh, pull this thing uh, back here. Uh, let's get rid of the A to B equals C. Let's get rid of some of the tools that I've got out here. Let's get rid of the expansions. So now we take a look at Herbalife, which really got down into really oversold uh, condition. Doing that, uh, getting down to a level of about 10 or even yeah, 10 uh, during that December 24th, Christmas Eve out there. So certainly they were not uh, celebrating 19 million shares to the uh, downside. You can see truly working off that condition and working off that condition. Had some big volume in this uh, equity here on January 9th. Now moving up towards the top of the overbought range out here. Uh, and it is back to its uh, creek out here, most certainly. Uh, you know, I'm not a big fan of trading this equity here. We've got a couple of big bulls and bears out there uh, that are trading uh, this equity, and this is really, really news-driven. However, you can't pay attention to the stock chart, paying attention to what an equity does as it gets into those oversold or overbought uh, territories out there and how it works itself off. So it's a great, uh, great stock chart for doing that. Let's go take a look at... Uh, Let's see, what do we got here? Sears Holdings, SHLD. Let's go see what she is up to, other than being up about 6% here this morning. So Sears Holdings uh, doing nothing more, most likely just working off an oversold condition. Let's go find out. Let's put that on the uh, chart, and most certainly uh, it is doing that. Sears Holdings had some volume come out of this most recently on January 8th, 5 million shares. It's up against that level here as we speak. The top of that was 43.78. 5 million shares so far this morning, 741,000 shares in a little over an hour of uh, trading. So tackling the last downdraft, again, that high, 43.78, trading out at 43.47 right now. It's gotten up to 43.65. Also, what should hold Sears in a checkout here is this downdraft from November 16th. So let's go take a look at that, put that uh, line across the uh, screen. That level is going to be the uh, $46.13 range. You can see if you, if you actually move the uh, chart, the line down a little bit lower where the real resistance line is. So it's really that, that volume out there, that supply line, and all that Sears Holdings is trying to do is maybe get up into there where it will go ahead and very likely sell off a, again. Let's put this on a longer term chart and see where the uh, weekly volume is on this. So what Sears is really trying to do is get back and test the lows from January of 2012 out at the $28 range out here. Let's go to uh, Rick in uh, British Columbia. Rick, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you doing? Hey, really good, thanks. How are you doing? Today? Good. Your weekend, how was that? Really good, thanks. Excellent, excellent. You're buying euros, selling euros, looking at euros. Well, I don't know. I That euro's been sneaking up, and I think it's done an ABC structure up already. I think it's going to 135, 136. And and I'm wondering if that thing couldn't even go a lot higher with your fiscal cliff problems. We don't have no fiscal cliff. You know, you think, don't you think you're has well, a not fiscal in cliff? Not in Florida, you don't. <laughs> okay, all right, there you go. That's right, that's right. You know, if there, there is a possibility of an A to B equals CD. I mean, I've got the weekly chart up on my screen on the uh, Euro. We're certainly taking a look at this myself over the weekend. And, you know, 137 is actually game right now. Yeah. Uh, you know, on the weekly chart. It's amazing, uh, you know. It is. And actually, if it were to go to 137, the truth is it would go to 140. Because, I, I, I know, I know. And, uh, I mean, you know, your fiscal cliff talks apparently are going to, I really don't know exactly what's all going on there, but apparently that's going to start heating up in the next month or two again. Yes. Which could, if nothing's agreed upon, create a lack of confidence. 
you know, on a downgrade again, uh, uh, as if Europe's doing any better. But <laughs> well, <laughs> you know. well, what, what happens is, you know, what happens is, is, is obviously the big fish, the the big whale, you know, takes away from the focus on what's going on in Europe. So I think that with what dominates our uh, news and media certainly is going to be is going to be what happens next year over the next uh, six weeks or so. You yeah. know that that that's for sure. But but when I do take a look at the euro, you know the weekly chart, and you know you're you're pointing it out as well. If I take a look at just simply the retracement off of the lows, you know going off of January 27th high, folks down to September 14th, it only did a 0 0.382 retracement when it pulled back and was testing really the uh, trend line, you know that it had broken through and it came back on November 16th. So when you only do a 0 0.382 retracement on your A to B equals CD, it sets up, you know, but but. A run beyond a one to one A to B equals C D. Yeah, hey, you know, I mean uh, uh I got this charting service I use and it looked like it had the volume on Friday, which is usually a light day. Mm hmm And um I think it's just gonna pull back into that day, which is around one thirty two fifty. And uh very well, you know, obviously one thirty support, strong support, but one thirty two fifty, you know, may just be where it holds here. It continues on to finish the ABC structure up, you know. It can, but you know, you're always you're so good to the show and so good for calling in. I want to do, I want to give you a gift, but you got to send me an email. All right, so send me an email, Steve at tfn.com, dot com, because I've got a chart of the euro that you want to you want to take a look at. All right, and it's it's something out there that that uh, very few people I think have ever looked at. And it's a pattern out there, and I'd like to share it with you. So if you do send me an email at steve at tfnn.com, I'll share that with you. Well, you know what? You've got to keep it to yourself, though. Yeah, but you got to keep this to yourself, too, eh? I'm not going to send you an email, but you see there's a nice little inverted head and shoulder formation on a six-month chart? I do. And I don't know what that targets, but I think it targets what you just said. Well, I don't know if it's one-third. Plus, the, a head and shoulder pattern minimum distance up, right? That's right. So like 136 at least. That doesn't mean it can't go higher. That's right. That's right. And then the support area would be, you know, in the neckline area or like Tom said, the breakout area, 130 on a weekly. But anyway, you know, this, and that's why I just wonder if we're not going to, you know, uh, just continue a little bit. I don't mean that we can't pull back for a day or two, but. Well, and it, and it has to. It's like the any other. It's like any other uh, stock chart out there. You know, I like I like utilizing that uh, that relative strength indicator from a breathing pattern where it has to work off those conditions out there. You know, as well as other tools out there. And so you've got the euro. You know, the, what the euro has done. It's made a one point two seven two expansion. It's testing a cluster of swing points out here. Uh, you know, which go back into the uh, February 2012 time frame. So yeah. it needs a little bit of a timeout. And the question is always measuring that pullback. And you know what's really cool about Apple right now? We're doing a little doji right now, okay? On, the, uh, on the daily chart? Uh, yeah. yeah, and on the hourly we did it too. I think it was a 15-minute. It looks to me like we're going to go to about 585. And that may be the low until the earnings come out, if that makes any sense. 585. Oh, you're looking for a bounce up to 585. Uh, sorry, sorry. No, no, sorry. Down to 585. My, I said that wrong. Down to 485. Yeah, 485. 485. Okay, all right. Because it's uh, straight out of 505 right now. Yeah, so, no, yeah. sorry about that. No, no, but, no. It's uh, cool. It's cool. It's cool. Put it on a weekly, I think it is. Yeah. And you'll see there's real strong support down. Uh, see that little, that high volume day back in, oh, where was it here? In uh, early part, or latter part of February, early part of March of last year. Oh. See that? Yeah, oh, no, no, no question about it. And yeah. then we may yeah. putter around here. We may even go to 540. There's a little gap there yet. But I, I mean, I'm just saying your risk reward to buy it down there for a quick bounce, not for hanging on. Um, just, but, you know, you wouldn't want to let it get under. I don't know. what What's the low of that week, that high volume week there in early is it early February or late February? It is, no, it's the February time frame, because even on the daily chart, the February time frame, the 496.89 is the number that people have to be paying attention to, because that's the daily uh, that's the uh, daily number out there. The uh, weekly number is 486.63. Okay. But I think one of the things to really be concerned about from Apple is that it is below the swing point from May, tw May 18, 2012. Hasn't, oh, been able, hasn't been able to get above that, you know, and it just says it's screaming that it wants to go down to 363 Thanks. bucks. Take care, Rick. Thanks you for calling. You bet. Bye-bye. 877-927-6648. Dow is off five bucks. We'll be right back.
Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's new trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. And you'll get the Technical Corner segment, which is a short but powerful weekly training session on trading. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you just the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two weeks. Go to TFNN.com and click on the free trial link at the top of the page. That's an $85 value, yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind and get the edge you've been looking for. Tom O'Brien's weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, has helped subscribers for over 10 years navigate the high-risk world of exploring and producing gold companies. And now's a great time to sign up for a free month-long trial to see the kind of insight that Tom delivers for his subscribers on a weekly basis. Every Monday, Tom O'Brien issues a quick update on the metal market, giving you his take on the HUI, XAU, GLD, dollar, bonds, and much more. Tom follows Monday's update with a full gold report which is delivered to subscribers Tuesday afternoon with detailed coverage of 24 separate gold or metal stocks as well as another 10 to 15 stocks that he lets you know are on his potential watch list. Get your month-long free trial to the gold report today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Don't spend another year navigating the metal markets on your own. Act early in 2013 and make the most of your gold and metal market investments. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Let me tell you something, folks. I have people coming up to me saying, I just can't believe the amount of work that Steve does on his newsletter. Yeah. And I says, I absolutely agree. That is a recent clip from the Money Masters show that Tom and I do each day at TFNN. My newsletter service, Mastering Probability, is much, much more than a newsletter. Yes, it's outperformed the S&P 500 by 100% during the last 15 months. But more importantly, it's an extraordinary education, a roadmap for your success. And it's yours risk-free for the next 30 days. Just go to the homepage of TFNN.com and click on my name, Steve Rhodes, and then Mastering Probability. Because everyone needs a success strategy. For most, it's a competitive edge, the will to win, the drive to overcome any obstacle. Whatever you call it, winners find a way. Find your way to Mastering Probability today. Because your journey to extraordinary rewards is just one click away. Catch Basil Chapman as he uses his Chapman Wave methodology to call the markets. The Tiger Technician's Hour, next on TFNN. Welcome back, folks. They got the uh, Dow is uh, off five points right now. S&P off four, composite down 13. And the uh, chart on my screen here is the uh, correlating chart of Microsoft and Apple out here. So the uh, bars that you're taking a look at, and again, if you're listening uh, just to us on your mobile device or at, at home, I'll try to describe to you what we're looking at. What I've done is a, a correlation between Apple and Microsoft. Uh, Microsoft made its high, its all-time high, back in December 31st, 1999, up at a, a price point of 59.97. Now, what I've done is I went ahead and took uh, the uh, black line that you're looking at on the uh, chart, 
it happens to be the uh, price of Apple. And I just simply went ahead and took, this is the current price of Apple, but I went ahead and took it and I moved it all the way back to the uh, peak of when Apple made its highs in that $700 range to match it up with the uh, uh, with uh, Microsoft out there. And there's a chatter inside the uh, den that, you know, uh, Apple will not see $1,000. Uh, you know, it'll see $300 certainly before then. And if uh, Apple certainly uh, takes its cue from Microsoft, I would have to concur with that as well, uh, that you have seen the highs. Not that uh, Apple's a bad company or anything along those lines, but just simply uh, overdone out there. And uh, so this chart here shows uh, Microsoft uh, at its highs back in December 31st, 2000, uh, I'm sorry, 1999 out there. And so far, Apple is just simply following along this, with uh, this uh, stock chart. Now, what is eerily interesting about this stock chart, as you can see, if, you're, if you really are paying, if you are paying, if you are watching us on uh, Tiger TV, you can see the correlation of the price move here. It's uncannily similar. You see uh, moves down uh, that are uh, similar, not necessarily in price, but just simply directional moves down and moves up uh, inside the uh, equity. I mean, it is uncanny how similar the uh, stock patterns are here between Microsoft and uh, Apple and says that Apple has a long way down. Well, we already know that Apple has a 200.8 to B move down and likely more than two on an expansion uh, of that move. And uh, in my opinion, uh, you know, Apple was fairly valued when Steve Jobs was with us. And uh, that's the price that Apple is headed down to in that $300 range out there. So that's on Microsoft. I think there are other warning signals out here in the marketplace, uh, one of those being this uh, GE Dow chart out here. Uh, folks, this is a another correlation that you want to be paying attention to because in this here, GE is one that is a leading indicator of a, a market move to the downside. In this case, you're taking a look at divergence here. We've got GE moving down off of its highs. Uh, most recently, that is the top part of the chart. You can see the red uh, diagonal line to the uh, downside, and yet we have the uh, Dow moving up. The reason why that is a uh, correlation that leads to reversals is just simply you go back and take a look at the last 10 years' worth of data and apply the same thing. When you see these divergences showing up, you see corrections taking place in the marketplace, oftentimes very large corrections out there, and that's what we have going on right now. What do you really want to be paying attention to? Well, a number of these things, I would say currency-wise, what you want to pay attention to is this stock chart here, and this is the Euro-Japanese yen. When you take a look at correlations out there, the S&P 500, and it's the Euro-Japanese currency pair that has a, a direct correlation to the S&P 500. I can't tell you why. I can just tell you that it does. And what you want to be paying to attention to there is you want to be paying attention to divergence as well. We do not have divergence here uh, yet. Uh, this is the daily chart of the uh, Euro Japanese yen. Yes, right now it's formed a little bit of a doji candle. We got a lot of trading uh, time left in uh, today's trading session, but the Euro yen currency pair continuing to make uh, higher highs out here. And it looks like it wants to head up to make a 100% move of move which would take this currency pair back into the April of 2011 time frame out in the 123.31 level. It's at 119 right now and change. Stay tuned, folks. Basil Chapman will be up next. Larry Pesavento, Daryl Martin, David White, 2 to 3, Ken Shreve, 3 to 4, and the Tom O'Brien Show from 4 to 6. Have a great Monday. Look forward to seeing you tomorrow in the a.m. Take care, folks.